Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn this cheap little Jason mask into something like this that looks like you could use it for a professional cosplay, a fan film, role play, whatever you wanna do, you do you, more power to you. We're gonna keep it PG here though. So, it's Halloween or close to Halloween. It's the same month as Halloween. Even though I'm filming this video two months prior, because right now it's technically August, I have my Halloween shirt on, so in my head it's Halloween. Basically anytime after summer, as soon as summer is like kind of over, it's Halloween for me. There's only two key moments during the year that I actually pay attention, and that's summer and Halloween. Everything else is a blur, so do you know what I think we should do? We should either eliminate the month of September or November and just make it like either October 1 or October 2 and just have October in the middle. So we have two Halloweens, you know, 60 days of Halloween instead of 30. That would be cool. Make me president and I'll make that happen. Anyway. Hey, I'm filming. Yes, I love you too. That was my dog. She really is just the star. She hears me filming and she hears a camera and she's like, oh, hey, what's up? Anyway. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn this cheap little Jason mask that you can buy for $5 off of eBay, or maybe you found it at Party City, Spirit Halloween, which is the best store ever. Cheap little Jason mask that cost me less than 10 bucks, I know I spent five on this one, into something like this that looks like you could use it for a professional cosplay, a fan film, role play, whatever you wanna do, you do you, more power to you. We're gonna keep it PG here though. This is just a prop. And even past that, I'm gonna show you how you can do it using very cheap products that pretty much everybody has. The only thing you might have to buy is like spray paint. And the fact that I caught that without looking with my mask on is insane. I'm gonna show you how you can do it with cheap stuff. Now, through the process, there will be a few optional steps. If you happen to have access to different tools or different methods, you're more than welcome to try it. But the base method that I'm going to describe through the whole thing and that I'll be prefacing the whole thing, you can do with household supplies and you'll spend less than $20 on your supplies. All in all, this is a fun project to turn something cheap into something great where you don't have have to spend a million dollars on a professional prop or something that looks like it's out of the movie you can make it and I'm gonna show you how let's go okay so like I said we're gonna turn this cheap mask into this or something like this I did this a couple years ago so it's gonna look a little different this time but basically the process is going to be the same throughout first things first this is very shiny if you can see it's very shiny it's not very porous it's going to reflect any sort of paint we try to put on it. It's not gonna adhere or absorb anything. So the first step is obviously to rough it up a little bit, hit it with some sandpaper, and that way we can have a little bit more of a rougher surface and our paint will actually attach to it. Still a little bit of shine on it just because it is a PVC plastic, it's gonna have a little bit of shine, but we doled most of it back. So now it has a rough surface for the paint to actually grab onto and attach to. I do wanna add the three blood stripes on Jason's mask because Jason has three stripes. He has two triangles down here and then a sports triangle right up here. I wanna add those three on there and then sand them back off. So the purpose of this is to establish the decals on the hockey mask and then fade them back into the mask. So it all looks as if it was like one piece, it was all painted on. There. And then when we actually apply this paint method, this paint method is from like the lake that he's in or the forest that he's in. Uh, and that would all be on top of said hockey mask, but the hockey mask would already have the paint on it. So I'm going to go through with red paint and paint on those three stripes. Now, ideally I would have liked to use like painter's tape or masking tape, but I don't have any and I can't find any. So I'm using this kind of tape. We're gonna see if it, uh, we're gonna see the result. It should work, but if it doesn't, this will be kind of funny. All right, we're getting somewhere. I like how this is looking. We put on that red and then we're slowly fading it back off. I feel like if there is a chance that the red does show through, I'm gonna really prefer if the red pops through rather than never putting it on. And plus, this could, this is another option. So if you wanna stop your mask here and you just want the red hockey mask, go for it. I'm gonna keep going though. Anyway, we're gonna hit it with the main paint method now. So the method we're gonna be using is going back outside and hitting it with the Rust-Oleum 2X that we used before. I'm not gonna hit it with a primer because I'm not going for a full adhesion coat. I'm going for a color overlay. The difference from that is that if I was trying to paint something completely from scratch, like a Nerf gun, I would want to give a good primer. But this, I like this color. I need this color to be the base coat 
so I'm not gonna bother priming. And plus, Rust-Oleum is so good, it's a paint and primer in one anyway. But I'm not just gonna be applying this over the mask, because I don't want it to be a super tan mask. I still wanna keep elements of that white. So I'm gonna be applying a different method. I'm also gonna be using a spray bottle to spray on water droplets before I put the paint on it and then lightly mist over it to try to give the look of Jason coming out of the water so that his mask is water stained so we can see the water droplets. I did this on the first one and you can see some of the water droplets. That's how I got this uneven coat and this uneven texture. I'm gonna apply that same method here. I haven't done this in years. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, again, this will be funny. The way we're gonna be doing it, obviously I have my Jason mask here. I have my satin spray that I'm going to be covering it with. This is the base coat. Before I do that, I'm going to lightly mist on water with a spray bottle. If you're doing this method, a lot of spray bottles have two different settings. They have a stream setting that shoots like a beam or more of a mist setting. You're going to go with the mist setting. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see what I'm doing here, but you're going to go with the wider mist. Don't get super close to it. Go out, spray a very light coat over it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit a very soft, light brush coat over it, like very nice, far away nice and easy we're not gonna get super close with it and it's just a method of layering over to see how you want it and then you leave it to dry All right, now we're at a really weird stage where the water and the paint are kind of like molded together and some is wet, some is dry. I'm gonna hit it with another coat of water and then just leave it. And we're gonna take it back inside and see what needs to be done. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to re-sand over this and then that, that'll give us the texture we want. Now what's inside, it is completely coated with that uh, tan spray you can still see a little bit of that triangle kind of showing through which is good That's that's pretty promising and we have that uneven textured spray. Here's where hopefully the magic happens I'm gonna take a light sanding sponge and go over the entire thing what We did is the layered paint approach with the like the water bubbles Hopefully that will give us more texture more depth with the paint and it will actually look like there's water damage on it Again, this is probably the third time I said this if it doesn't work That'll probably be funny, but at least you'll learn Just working very slowly over it gradually. Um, the method I'm kind of doing is I'm hitting it wide with this uh, sandpaper sponge to get most of it off. And then on the areas where I want it to look scratched, I'm going in with a rougher sandpaper grit and really scratching it. This is definitely more of a subtractive method of we added the paint on and now we're subtracting it off. And I think doing that gives you a good amount of control of where you want it to look. And again, remember, this is only a halfway step because we still have a lot of weathering to do with all the shoe polish and stuff. So this is more or less, again, a touch and go method. How you want it to look, is up to you. Uh, this is just the way I'm doing it, but hit it with your sandpaper and however you're happy with how it looks, go for it. Did I just do finger guns? I think I did finger guns, but without the, I did this. This is how we're looking after the sanding process and it is looking a lot more promising now because this actually looks like he's coming out of the water. I'm not going to lie. I took a blind shoot with that water method. I knew sort of what it would do, but it was more of a blind shot in the sense of I haven't done it in years since I did this one and that was a while back. So I really heavily layered on that water and focused on layering up the paint and it worked because you see we have some elements where the paint shows through like a different hue or a different saturation or some where it's just straight the white mask coming through and that's great. It gives you a whole spectrum of layers, a whole spectrum of highlight and contrast, and that's awesome. And it just looks cool. At any point, you can leave your mask how it is. You can stop whatever you are doing. You can stop it here if you like it. But I'm going to keep pushing another step further. So before I apply any of the weathering process, I'm going to go back one step and apply some cracks, divots, and damage to the mask overall. I'm going to do that using a few tools. The main tool I'll use is a Dremel with a cutting bit. I'm going to cut off different sections of the mask, chip off different areas very slightly, very loosely. I'm also going to go in with a series of exacto blades, Stanley knives, screwdrivers, scissors, anything that I can to give scratches, chips to the mask, whatever I want. This is a step where you can get as creative as you want. You can go full damage, you can slice off half the mask if you want, more power to you. You can do slight damage, little chips in the eyes, or you can do nothing. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. I'm going to go kind of in the middle. I like a lot of damage, but I want it to still be like a mask. This is kind of going to be my reference point of this amount of damage. So we're going to have scratches over the whole thing. 
probably a chunk taken off of this side of the mask as well and just overall have fun with it By the way, I want to take a sec to say a quick thank you to my friends over at G Fuel Energy for being so kind as to send me out a care package of their new horror-themed flavors, including, of course, the Friday the 13th Hack and Slash flavor. G Fuel is really awesome. It's my energy drink of choice. As people know, I've said it before, I don't really like soda. I don't like a lot of energy drinks, but G Fuel is the one that I found a while back that I've really stuck with, that I really do enjoy. And I've had the awesome opportunity to actually work with G Fuel on a few occasions and would love to work with them again in the future. And because of that, they're the coolest. They sent me out their horror flavors. So make sure to go check out some G Fuel. I'll leave a link down below. Feel free to check out the new flavors and grab some for yourself. I'm happy with this damage so far. Uh, if I go farther, I'll go farther later. But right now, I don't want to super, super overdo it. I just wanted to get a decent amount of cracks and scuffs and scratch. So now, next up is one of my favorites when it comes to a prop like this, which is weathering. Where we basically dirty the whole thing up even farther. So we're pushing it even farther. So it's how we get those dark eyes. It's how we get those dark streaks. It's how we get things to look nasty. And the way I'm going to do that is my personal favorite method of weathering. There's two ways you can apply the shoe polish. The first way I did to my custom Zerg figure, which is chilling back over there, is where you completely coat the entire piece and then you let it dry and then you wipe it off. This is a method where I think I'm going to want to do the quicker method of putting it on and wiping it off to really ingrain it into the mask. Again, do whatever works for you, whatever you want to do. Um, my preferred method, of course, is the shoe polish. Some people use acrylic paint, some people use an airbrush, but I know black shoe polish is very easily attainable, uh, very cheap, and it works. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, we are on the home stretch of this project. Let me explain everything that we just did. So obviously this is a much darker shade than what we started with. That is a result of very, very heavily layering on all of that shoe polish. I kid you not, all I did was just layer on the shoe polish, layer after layer. And you saw in those clips how every time I layered it on, it got darker and darker. And then once I got to a certain tone that I liked, I started specifically choosing where I wanted it. As you can see, I went a lot heavier on this side of the crack over here by the scars and very heavy on the eyes. I layered up on the eyes incredibly heavy at the end and just let it soak in and then would dab into it. I also used gravity to my advantage with that liquid method where I was putting it in very specific spots and letting it drip down to achieve these other drip marks and go in and sand back down. So you can see these drip marks that were naturally put in place just by basic gravity and then we would go back in and sand it off. Once I was happy with how it all looked and how the tone looked, how the color looked, I went back in one more time with our sandpaper and I very strategically picked where I wanted it to scuff up so that I could have the lighter scuff marks on the darkest of paint. What I will say is I'm actually surprised that the blood stripes managed to show through. The decals here, you can kind of see them. I don't know if we can see the, the triangle up here. You can sort of see it if you really focus in on it but from a distance you can't see. Last steps that we have are incredibly easy. It's just attaching the back mask together. And I'm also gonna add in some mesh on the eyes. I did that on the first mask here, and it very much helps when you are wearing the mask to give that dead eye look, to give that dark aura behind the eye. Because if you wear this mask and your eyes show through, it kind of takes a bit of the vibe away. A little bit of the mood goes away, even if you have eye black. So. I personally prefer to do black mesh. If I don't have any black mesh, I'm just gonna take some black fabric and temporarily tape it in place just so you can see what it looks like all done. But that's gonna be the last steps that we're doing and it looks like we're pretty much done. Holy shit, this does not want to cut. In all fairness, this isn't even fabric, man. I ripped this off of the old ghost face mask I was gonna use, but I don't like the material of this. I totally just ripped the this mask off of the fabric that came with it. I thought it'd be easier to cut, but damn.
And there we have it. We are completely done with our custom painted Jason mask that we started with looking something like this. This was a fun project to show you how you could take something incredibly cheap that you can get for like five to 10 bucks at Spirit Halloween, Target, Party City, or just online at like eBay or Amazon. And you can turn it into something that looks a lot more professional that you can use for a cosplay, a costume for Halloween, or fan film or something like that, or just a prop to hang up. After I do them, I don't do a Jason cosplay, so I just hang them all up with my Freddy glove that I made from scratch. And I hang them all up on the side of my poster over there because I just love the horror theme. Anyway, I do really hope that you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. I really hope that some of the methods I did could help you replicate this in your own Jason mask, or maybe other cosplays or props that you might be using or need this stuff for. So happy Friday the 13th, and I want to give another quick shout out to my friends over at G Fuel for again being so kind as to send over those horror themed products. Seriously, if you guys really want to go check those out, I'll leave a link down below. You guys know I'm not really one to promote products, I'm not really one to do that type of thing unless I really do enjoy the product or I really do like it, and G Fuel is something that I genuinely do use, and again, I've been grateful enough to have worked with them because of that. So feel free to check out the G Fuel, link is in the description. Again, happy Friday the 13th. As always, thank you so much for watching. Peace and love. Do good things. And I'll see you in the next one. And maybe in the next one, we'll be doing something a little bit more along the lines of this. Peace. Yeah,